in management companies cheap or something, and they drive you straight to the venue, and then you have to sleep on the bus until town check or you know, like, you know, where you don't get to. You know, so there's certain things that happen once in a while. It's just like a pleasure thing, or they want to, you know, not have a hotel or something, or or yeah. There's uh, and then on really like early tours, like back in the early nineties, because they would make you this double up well and they do that a lot today. Um, you know, on smaller tours, but you know, they two two guys per hotel room or something. Those kind of things suck obviously. Um right. which, you know, I mean I don't know, I mean there's really but, you know, at the level that I've been tweeting that none of that stuff's been an issue. Yeah, not um, anymore, I guess, yeah, at this point. It's fun, I guess, you know, missing missing your friends and family at home. I guess that could be a drag or but really pretty fun. It's nice to just be able to wake up and have everything on a day sheet right. looked under your hotel room and okay, you're gonna get picked up at two for sound check and dinner's at five and then you can kinda of live this life of basically being babysitted, which is pretty fun. So okay. and depending on if, if one is single or whatever then then there's a whole new level of social fun that happens, you know. <laughs> right. If you're, you know, if you don't have a girlfriend or something, but I hear you. Um, so, so really, it's um, it's it's pretty great, you know. And I, yeah, I mean, it's there's been crappy van tours that I've been on, you know. I mean, that sucks where you have to be in a van for ten hours sitting up and there's no you can't lay down or something, you know. That so. Basically, the accommodation, accommodations, of poor course. accommodations would make would, would make the tour bad. Yeah, I so, think that's what made me miserable more than more than anything. But what what was? Um, I know we're running out of time here because you gotta you gotta get ready for your gig. You got that early gig going on. Um, <laughs> what? Where is your favorite place to play? I know you mentioned Japan and Tokyo, but what was the absolute? You know greatest show you think you ever experienced? See, that's... I had a lot of fun at the Woodstock Buck Cherry show in 99. That was a great one. Um, we played some epic shows with Buck Cherry. I mean, we did... We did the... What was it? The, the Osaka Dome or Tokyo Dome or something with, uh... Like, I think... Who was on the bill? It was like... A, Mr. Big and Aerosmith or something like that, and you know, like killer. You know, like there's over a hundred thousand people in the audience. Yeah, so, that's, that's uh, I like those kind of things. Um, but I also like playing, you know, like when I like playing really quiet, like acoustic music too, where there's like you can hear a pin drop, you know, and there's like, you know, whatever, like just kind of, you know, like a local place in LA like Hotel Cafe the sound is pristine and people listen and it's a really intimate experience so, I mean I like I kind of run the gamut but so this is what else we do yeah, Madison Square Garden gig cool in New York opening for Lenny um, um, I had some awesome festivals with Chris Cornell like Ross Kilda Germany and uh um, Reading Festival. I love all those crazy festivals. There. They're just getting muddy and aggro. It's pretty cool. Yeah, um, I guess it's hard to actually pick something with all the with all the experience you had. It's, uh, there's got to be so many great memories there. Yeah, I had a fun show at, at was it Irving Plaza with Chris Cornell, um, where he actually shaved my head on stage. That was one of my favorite performances. It's on <laughs> That's YouTube. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that but, one yeah, out. I like, cause I had long hair, and it was, you basically you just type in like Yogi Chris Cornell head shaving or shaving the head. Um, but funny. it was a New York gig, and it was super fun. It took him a lot longer than what I expected. It was almost 10 minutes or something. That's funny. You know, I know just sitting there pulling notes out of the guitar while he was just taking his time shaving. <laughs> was that something that was planned or was it like, all right? Well, I had decided that I wanted to shave my head and, and 
And then the other guitar player, Pete Thorne, decided, or he kind of had the idea, he was like, I'll just have Cornell shave it for you on stage. So that was brilliant. We just asked him, like, basically before the gig, like, hey, what do you think about this? And Cornell is so cool. And he's just like, okay. So, That's and funny. Just, just, just did it. They pulled out the tension cord, the razor, and bar stool. I just sat there and he just shaved. That's funny. Pretty hilarious. Like, I know when um, yeah. bands and tours, they usually, you know, do pranks on each other. What's something that, you know, happened, you know, with you guys, maybe Buck Cherry or something, when you were opening for, like, Lenny Kravitz? Did he did he do anything to you guys at the end of the tour or any other the, any um, of the other bands? Or? He didn't, that was a pretty tame tour, but I, I don't know. I remember getting gas tapes when, we were out with, when I was out with Meredith Brooks. They just, on the last end of tour prank, they just gas taped the whole band members, like, legs together. So we put our, you know, like, just, they came with long pieces of tape and we couldn't move around on stage. <laughs> it was like a big encore, you know, so it didn't really matter. That's but, funny. So, kind of random shit like that, or putting water on the drums, like, at the opening song, so that when they hit the cymbals and the drums, it's like, like, splashes <laughs> everywhere. Or glitter or some kind of weird thing. What what have you um, done to other bands? Have you ever done anything to them or? What do we do? It's just I don't know. Maybe it's like it seems like it's just a lifetime ago to recall some specific incident. But because um, a lot of the a lot of the sort of hired gun gigs, like Buck Chair is a little different because we we're a band, but, right? You know, um, but like when you're sort of on a hired gun gig like Chris Cornell or Anastasia or something, you don't really kind of cross those boundaries that much, you know? Right. Yeah, it, yeah, I guess know, that makes sense. It I just, mean... It just crosses the, the, you know, but, um, yeah, I would say probably most of that stuff happens like with Doc Cherry or, like, Meredith Brooks and just kind of, like, the earlier experiences. And, uh, but, yeah... Uh, well, I do probably need to get going now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but uh, yeah, man, pleasure, pleasure chatting, and uh, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, Thank no you. problem, man. I'll be posting links so anybody that's interested in you know learning more about him and finding his music. Just you can either hit me up or listen to the interview and just follow the links on Facebook. I definitely appreciate you calling in, taking the time. Um, Thanks for, you know, everything, man. You've been a pleasure to deal with and followed through, and I greatly appreciate it, man. It, it, it's it's great to, to have you on. You got it, my man. All right. Yeah, well, Anytime you want to come on, I got something to promote. You feel free to just shoot me a message. Uh, every day I'm getting more listeners, so hopefully I know you're, you know, pretty big up there, but little guys like me, but at least I might touch someone – out there that never, you know, heard you and gets to experience that, so. Cool. Right on, my man. All cool. right, man. Well, you, you have a we'll great talk gig. A later. And, uh... cool. All right, sweet. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. All right, thanks, man. You have a great night and enjoy your gig. And uh, here's for the movies by Buck Cherry of Time Bomb. Have a good one, man. Cool. Bye. <laughs> we
I see a place for you and I And we can make the most of it Cause our passion never dies And if you don't believe in me I'll choose a path and change your mind And you can take me to your room Or wherever you may hide A change of pace could really do some good This is Peter Griffin, and you're listening to the J. Stone Show at RockMetalTalk.com, bitch. Mm-hmm. 